A very good evening and welcome to this outdoor service of evening prayer. It's such a beautiful day today. I thought it would be lovely to celebrate evening prayer with you out of doors. I'm here in the grounds of St. Peter's Church here in Mount Rathen. We have the light of God, the sun shining down upon us, thanks be to God, this weekend. Our service this evening begins on page 101 of the prayer book. The Lord be with you and also with you. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast to the faith we profess. The hymn I've chosen to read to you this evening is hymn number 295 and it dates to the 1700s. The language of it I think is absolutely beautiful and it very uh, warmly captures uh, the Spirit and we'll be celebrating the coming of the Holy Spirit on Sunday, Pentecost. Come, gracious Spirit, heavenly dove, with light and comfort from above. Be thou our guardian, thou our guide, o'er every thought and step preside. The light of truth to us display, and make us know and choose thy way. Plant holy fear in every heart, that we from God may ne'er depart. Lead us to Christ, the living way, nor let us from his pasture stray. Lead us to holiness, the road that we must take to dwell with God. Lead us to heaven, that we may share fullness of joy forever there. Lead us to God, our final rest, to be with him forever blessed. Amen. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our first canticle, the Song of the Light, we recite together. Hail, gladdening light of his pure glory poured, who is the immortal Father, heavenly blessed, holiest of holies, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now we are come to the sun's hour of rest, the lights of evening round us shine. We hymn the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit divine. Worthiest art thou at all times to be sung with undefiled tongue, Son of our God, giver of life alone, therefore in all the world thy glories, Lord, they own. Our psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 46 on page 600 and 44 of the prayer book. That's Psalm 46, beginning page 644, and let us recite together. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains tremble in the heart of the sea, though the waters rage and swell, and though the mountains quake at the towering seas. 
There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place of the dwelling of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, therefore shall she not be removed. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations are in uproar and the kingdoms are shaken, but God utters his voice and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come and behold the works of the Lord, what destruction he has wrought upon the earth. He makes wars to cease in all the world, he shatters the bow and snaps the spear, and burns the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God, I will be exalted among the nations, I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading. The first reading this evening, this evening is taken from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, beginning at the 27th verse. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of humans and the seed of animals. And just as I have watched over them to pluck up and break down, to overthrow, destroy and bring evil, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In those days they shall no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But all shall die for their own sins. The teeth of everyone who eats sour grapes shall be set on edge. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle this evening is the canticle Magnificat, and again let us recite together. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, who has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. God has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. The Lord has shown strength with his arm and scattered the proud in their conceit casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading, the Gospel reading. This is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 7, beginning at the 37th verse. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the ones who believe in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the word of the Lord. 
thanks be to God. Our third canticle this evening is the canticle Nunc Dimittis, and again let us recite together. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be forever acceptable in your sight. There's a bit of a cool breeze blowing at the moment. I hope it's not affecting you hearing me, though. Uh, I'm very grateful to Margaret Hawkins uh, for providing this uh, microphone. It certainly, uh, hopefully, is an improvement for our outdoor services that you can hear uh, me a good deal uh, better over the noise of the wind and the ever-increasing traffic on our roads. But as I sit here, uh, I think the forecast today was for 20 or 21 degrees and it certainly feels that way at the moment. I don't know if any of you have ever uh, worked out in the Middle East, maybe you've worked in the oil fields or perhaps even in some of the industries or, or nursing out there in the likes of Saudi and other parts of the Middle East or indeed if you've been on pilgrimage to the Holy Land you certainly know that 20 or 21 degrees out there is not considered warm at all. It's considered maybe quite a cool afternoon or or, or, or day, indeed they're well used to temperatures in the very high 30s, indeed topping 40 at times. And certainly as Jesus walked among the people of Israel at the time, the, with his apostles and talking to them and teaching them and also sitting down among the people and teaching them too, there are many days when it must have been absolutely scorching uh, the heat that he and the others in, in the crowd had to endure. And that is why Jesus uses such beautiful imagery, such as uh, thirsting for God in our gospel uh, this evening. Because these are experiences that all of us have. Every human being knows what it's like to be thirsty. As I speak to you now, I'm sure many of you might have a glass of water or a drink close to hand. Indeed, maybe you're sitting outside enjoying the service in the, the warm evening. So as I say, uh, our, our first thought on a warm day is to get something to drink, either pop into the shop and buy a can uh, to drink or maybe pop into the house and just fill a glass from the uh, tap. But something all of us everywhere, every human being uh, knows what it's like to experience that. And so this is why Jesus uses these ordinary examples to people because everyone can relate to what he's saying. Now as uh, our wonderful creator, as our God and creator of this glorious and wonderful universe, he could have spoken to the people about the moon, he could have talked to them about the planet Mars, indeed he could have talked to them about a time when human beings would walk on the surface or indeed live on the planet Mars. But no, he didn't. Of course he knows these things as our God, but there would be no point in him using examples such as that for the people because it would have passed way over their heads. It would have been completely beyond their comprehension. Even talking to them about snow would be something that many in Israel might never have seen or certainly never have experienced. So there would be no point in talking to them about the cold of a snowy mountainside or trudging uh, through the snow when these were experiences that people didn't have. So we all use examples of ordinary living uh, for people to relate to and such in our gospel uh, this evening is the example when he talks about coming to him all who are thirsty for the Lord. Now the people that were standing there could see that he didn't have water with him. It's very sim similar to the story of the woman at the well because again when he talks about living water she knows that he's not exactly referring to what's put before her eyes at that very moment that he's indicating something else and that's likewise with, with, with the people he's speaking to uh, this, in this evening's gospel. They can see that he doesn't have water jars, they can see he's not laden down with a barrel of water, they can see he doesn't have a ladle, that he's not talking to them to come to him simply for a drink. 
but the love of God overflows, poured out from the Lord into our hearts. And all of that beautiful imagery in the Gospel, imagery that we can relate to very easily today and that they could at the time, seeing the water flowing into a stone jar and overflowing, the love of God, the Holy Spirit just filling us to to the brim and this is what he desires and asks of us as the day of Pentecost approaches so in our gospel on Sunday Jesus will talk about breathing on the disciples breathing on the Holy Spirit out onto the disciples and here in preparation for that he's using the image of water overflowing and to be like that we must open our hearts as it says there in the scripture open our hearts to the Lord and that loving water flowing out from God and poured into our hearts overflowing from us to those around us and to those whom we meet and this is what God earnestly desires of all of us to not to withhold the spirit we can't do that within ourselves to allow the spirit to overflow from us to touch the hearts of other human beings spreading the love of God the knowledge of our Lord and Savior to all whom we meet Amen I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you and also with you. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers, and grant our government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within you, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. <clears throat> The Collect of the Seventh Sunday of Easter. O God, the King of Glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Mercifully give us faith to know that, as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first Collect of Evening Prayer, together we pray. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good just judgments, and all just works proceed, give to your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and kindness through Jesus, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And the second collect. Lighten our darkness, O Lord, we pray, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I use form two of our prayers on page 238 of the prayer book. <clears throat> Lord of your people, strengthen your church in all the world. We continue to remember in our hearts 
and in our prayers, the persecuted body of Christ, the wounded church throughout the world. We remember at this time the church in Eritrea. We remember the Christian people there enduring such terrible and horrific persecution. Lord, open the hearts of all world leaders, all world governments, that all in our world, whatever their religious affiliation, may be able to live in peace and harmony. Renew the life of this diocese. Bless Michael, our, bil our bishop, and build us up in faith and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of creation, look with favour on the world you have made. Guide the na nations in the ways of justice and of peace. Again, we pray wholeheartedly for peace in our world, for an end to conflict and disharmony. Lord, touch the hearts of all world leaders. Touch the hearts of all of us to make peace alive in our homes, our hearts, in our land and in our world. And bless our president, Michael D. Higgins, and all in authority. We pray in a special way for those who have authority for the fight against the COVID-19 virus at this time. Lord, we ask you to continue to guide and inspire them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of our relationships, comfort and sustain the communities in which we live and work. We pray for those who have no work at this time, for those who have lost their jobs, or those who are worried about the status of their employment. We pray for those who have returned to work and who are trying to repay loans. Lord, calm their fears, their worries and their anxieties at this time. Help us to love our neighbours as ourselves. Enable us to serve our families and friends and to love one another as you love us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all healing, believe and protect those who are sick or suffering. Be with those who have any special need. As we pause to remember those who have asked us to pray for them or those whom we know who are in need of prayer at this time, we remember in a particular way those who are battling loneliness at this time, distant from friends or family and anxious and worried about their health. Excuse me. Lord, lay your healing hands upon them, grant them health of mind and body, and deliver all who know danger, violence, loneliness, fear, anxiety, or oppression. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, again, a prayer for our young people. We pray in a particular way for those hoping to return at some stage to school but not knowing when. Lord, we ask you to be with them, help them as they prepare to return to school, calm their fears, their worries and, and anxieties. We pray for those who are finishing up school this year. We remember the graduates of the Mount Rat Community School at present and graduates of other schools around the country. Lord, bless them as they prepare for college or prepare for apprenticeships or prepare to enter the workforce and guide them in the times that lay, lie ahead of them, particularly in these moments of great anxiety and uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of eternity, bind us together by your Holy Spirit in communion with all who, having confessed the faith, have died in the peace of Christ, that we may entrust ourselves and one another and our whole life to you, Lord God, and come with all your saints to the joys of your eternal kingdom. Amen. Just before our final prayer and blessing to remind you about the service on Sunday, which will be at three o'clock, and that will be broadcast live. It will be broadcast over the radio here in Mount Rath on 104.5 FM, that's the Mount Rat local radio. Hopefully you'll be able to tune in on that. If you have access to the internet, uh, we, the service will be transmitted again live at three o'clock from St. Fintan's Roman Catholic Church here in the town with the use of their webcam facilities. And I'm very grateful to Father Brophy uh, for inviting us to celebrate Holy Communion uh, next Sunday. So that'll be a live service at Holy of Holy Communion over the radio uh, or over their parish web webcam on the internet. You might make uh, that known to other people around you so that they're able to tune in. And the details of that will be in the description there uh, on the camera and YouTube. But there's a way of clicking something to, to, to list a description 
of the video and I'll put the details of how to connect to the webcam or tune in on the radio there for you. So have a wonderful evening, keep safe and well and with the help of God uh, July will come soon enough and we'll be able to return uh, to our churches and for those of you anxious to return uh, to work as well and those likewise our young people anxious to get back to meeting their friends, hopefully everything will come to pass in due course. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless.